In this segment, we'll talk about the tools that it takes to properly prepare the cable for connectorization. This is the uh, Times Fiber Connector Toolkit, and in here you'll find is our cable cutters, the prep tool, the compression tool, 716 transfer for tightening, and a pair of nitro rubber gloves that make it much easier for it to hold onto the cable and put the connectors on without damaging anything. Next, we'll talk about how each tool is used. All right, now we're going to talk about the proper use of the cutting tool. This is what we give you in our toolkit. It's capable of cutting stainless steel, so you can cut the messenger with it. Be very cautious. The blades are very sharp on it. But it's very proper, or you need to cut the cable in the proper method. And that is, when you cut it, cut it flat. And the reason is, when you cut this flat, when you put it into the preparation tool, which we'll go over, is this has to be, the center conductor when it's trimmed has to be a certain length, 5 sixteenths of an inch. If I cut it improperly and I cut it on an angle and then I put it into the tool, you can see where the center conductor will not be the right length. We're going to talk about the preparation tool. This is the standard times fiber tool we hand out. In the front is the RG59, RG6 blade. This one trims RG11. For those of you that are left-handed, to make it easier, these tools, these blades pop out and you can flip them in the other way to make it work. Now, we've prepped our cable flat. It's proper. Let's use the tool. On this tool is a positive stop. You open it up. You put the edge of the cable right against the stop. Me, I always give a slight pinch to set the blades in here, and then you start the turns. You listen for it and feel for it. Four, say five times maximum is all you need. At that point, I'll ask you just to slightly grip the tool without pinching it and pull it straight off. This. All right. That makes the proper preparation. You've got your 516 center conductor and your quarter inch braid when that's going to be rolled back when we cover that portion. Now, that makes the tool proper. It's easier to pull it off because if you don't ever have to touch this with your hands with the salt and the oils that are on them, you won't start corrosion on the center conductor. Now, there is one other tool that is used in the industry, and, and I don't really have a preference for what tool you're going to use. This is a standard tool in the industry, and one of the things you have to be prepared for with this tool is it doesn't have the positive stop. So I just want to cover that with you. If you have a tool without the stop, is you prep the cable, cut the end flat, put the cable so it's flush to the end, put your finger on it, and feel it. You don't want cable extending out. Slight pinch, turn it around, you'll hear it cutting. Again, Pull the cable out of the, uh, the uh, tool, and when you do it, make sure you don't roll your hands. You want to pull it straight out, and that way it keeps you from scratching the center conductor and causing any damage. This segment, we've already prepped the cable. We have what they call the quarter-quarter prep. It is 516 center conductor, plus or minus 1 32nd, because we used our tool properly, and a quarter inch of the braid folded back, or will be folded back. Now, to do that, if you talk to most technicians in your system, the standard practice that people did for years was to take and use their thumb to roll the braid back. And you know, ask this guy, any one of the people that you work with, let me see your thumb and forefinger. They usually have little pieces of braid in here in the winter time that gets all uh, chafed and chapped and everything like that. So the best thing to do is, for any golfers out there, these little brushes they use for cleaning golf clubs, or even a, a stiff bristle toothbrush or a parts brush, anything with a nylon bristle that won't damage the copper cladding, is you use that to fold back the braid. The more evenly you fold the braid back, the easier it is to put a connector on it. Okay, now I just showed you how to do a standard uh, piece of coax cable. There is another type out there that's called quad, and that has, instead of just the center conductor, the dielectric, the foil, the braid, and the jacket, this has another layer of braid and another layer of uh, foil. So to properly prep that, to get the connector to go on easier, is you standard tool prep it, and then you'll notice when you fold the outer layer of braid back with your brush that there is a layer of foil. To, to get a perfect connector on there, use a brush and you find the seam in the uh, foil, and then reach in with a pair of needle nose pliers or whatever, and you want to peel that foil off. Now you don't want to remove a lot of the jacket when you do, or the, not the jacket, but the braid, because when the connector is compressed, the braid is what actually keeps the connector on there and gives you your retention strength. And we'll sit there and we'll peel the foil off. You can see the foil starting to come off. Small of a piece of it there. And when you feel you've got it all out of the way, 
And this, I know this takes a little bit of time, but you know, you want to prep a connector and do it properly the first time every time because well, connectors will work even if they're not done properly because what's going to happen is they won't have the right impedance and they'll act up a little bit and what you'll do is things just won't work perfectly. Short of wrapping one of these pieces of braid around your center conductor, a connector will work. It just won't work efficiently. And in the digital environment, that becomes a big issue. In this segment, we're going to talk about putting the connector on the cable. We've already prepped it. You'll notice I have my gloves on now because cable is slippery and connectors are slippery and they're hard to deal with. And the last thing you want to do is take and hold your cable with your pliers like this when it's sliding because if I do that and I pinch it, we talked earlier, I've changed the impedance of the cable. So, a couple things you can do. Uh, connectors, there's, you know, when you think about these things, there are more of these in your system than anything else. Okay? They're taken for granted. People don't think much about them. They just try and put them on real quickly. When you consider probably 70% of your problems in the field with customer service are caused by these or the cable being mishandled when the technician's doing it, or the customer's playing with something after you've left. But, few features in this connector. For one, it's what they call a continuous ground or a continuity connector. And that means that in a piece of coax, there are two conductors, center conductor and there's a ground in the braid and the foil. Connector doesn't really seat itself in the digital world until it is tightened down properly and the grounding portion in here in this mandrel is tightened up to the interface you're going in. Continuous ground connector as a mechanical device that keeps the nut and the body in contact at all points so the connector is always grounded once you start threading it on. Also in this connector there's an o-ring down inside here when it is tightened down to the interface it prevents moisture as the cable expands and contracts with temperature down these threads will bring air or it'll draw air in and out and that air is moisture starts the corrosion process so this connector with an o-ring or if you don't have a connector with an o-ring they make uh, weather seals that you can put on the outside to keep that from happening. Now, to put this connector on, this jacket and braid have to expand. Now, say this is old cable, it's been sitting out in the sun for a while, the elasticity is gone from it, or my favorite is somebody's painted their house, they paint over the cable. You scrape the paint off to get to the jacket, but unfortunately, the chemicals in the paint take the elasticity out of the jacket and makes it difficult. And that's when people damage these by putting them on when they're fighting with it. So, a couple advantages here. This connector, one of the things you can do is break this back piece off. It snaps off. Make sure it's correctly positioned. Once you prepped it, slide it down on the cable. Especially helps on quad. To slide the quad cable in here, this is a much larger diameter than the uh, compression piece is. Makes it easier to go on. At that point, you put the connector on and you slide it down. Twist it slightly. You don't have to spin it around until you've seated it. And in there you can see the white dielectric, the foam dielectric, is up flush with the mandrel. You want to make sure that's flush in a connector. If you overextend it or don't put it in far enough, you can change the impedance of the connector because it makes it a partial air dielectric or foam dielectric. Now, one of the things that we can do, we'll just pop this off real quick. Say you're having a tough time. Take one of these connectors, take an old splitter, new one if you're feeling flush and don't mind spending the money on it. Just finger tighten the connector on taking a pair of nines between the nut and the body put the tool there not a lot of downward pressure, you're not trying to pinch it just to hold it, slide it and rock it back and forth at that point I've taken off the back end of the connector and I'll see I have this mandrel here and this thing on a splitter makes a great tool if I'm having trouble getting it on I make my own flaring tool I can sit there and just rock this in and pull this out and the cable stays expanded out for me to get the next connector on. And one of these things, if you can see right here, you can see how far down the mandrel goes, you can see how much the, the jacket has to expand to allow the connector to seat properly. That's why people have a hard time. They don't pay attention that mechanically you have to change the dynamics of the cable to get a connector on properly and seat it. In this segment we'll talk about compressing the connector on using the tool. And this tool is a very standard one in the industry. You have one side that does RG6 cable, RG59 connectors, and you rotate to RG11. We're using six. We've already inserted the connector that we showed that earlier. We'll put it on. The tool is already calibrated and set properly for this connector, and we just compress it down. 
When we're done, we take it out and we look at it. On this connector, we notice that the two pieces in the back are together. There's no uh, space there. You can't see the O-ring. This connector is sealed. If you use your tool properly, the center conductor is the proper length. Even if you think it looks at standing up a little higher than it should, I don't want to hear or see anybody doing one of these. And this is a standard practice, not using the proper length, and people just reach in with their nines and cut the center conductor off short. Well, what happens when you do that is, the next step is, you're going to insert this onto a tap, uh, say a barrel, an F81, and you're going to put this together. What you've done is, when you've reached in and cut that, for one, you've changed the length of the center conductor, so the contact points will be off inside here. And you've also sprayed the end of it out a little bit when you pinched it with the pliers. And I'd say it's a standard practice for most technicians is and each connector is required by SCTE specs to have a minimum of seven threads in the nut. So if I start putting this uh, connector on into this barrel, this F81, most people will not sit there, hold the barrel, and spin the nut on the connector. What they're going to do, because this is faster, they start spinning the barrel down and they tighten it all the way down like this. Well, What's happened when you do that, and we'll take it off now, is there's a sharp edge in here there's contact points in here that are supposed to touch the center conductor. As I spin this on, I've created seven scratches up those contact points. Digital environment, you could cause a reflection and cause an issue. In this segment, we're going to talk about the proper tightening of a connector. Now, as we've already got this installed, this could be any interface, it's just easier for me to hold this splitter in my hand, is the standard in the industry is 30 inch pounds of torque for outside connectors. Most people use a torque wrench, a variety of manufacturers of them. And fourth thing, if you're using a torque wrench, you need to learn how to use it properly. I love that now some of them have a speed ratchet on it. The problem is, if you use a torque wrench properly, hand tighten your connector down. When you start getting it tight, slow down till the handle pops. That's 30 inch pounds of torque. The problem with the standard, with the ones with the, the ratchets on them, and a lot of people, just come in because everything's done, we want to get it done quickly, they go very fast. And if I sit there and ratchet this thing up and do one of these, by the time my brain has told my hand to stop moving, I've exceeded that 30 inch pounds by quite a bit. And when I do that, I can actually damage the in inside of the connector, the interface there. I can scratch this, I can warp these contacts. So this is brass, these are either brass or aluminum, and I can damage them. So trick is, if you're using a torque wrench, Use it properly, don't go too fast. When it gets tight, slow down till it breaks. If you're using a 7 16 wrench, then you tighten it up by hand and put your 7 16 wrench on and you don't have to go a quarter turn, eighth turn, or whatever. Do whatever it takes, give it a slight bump, like that. All right, this one's been on and off so it went a little further than a brand new one. But at this point, if I cannot remove this connector by hand, then I am tight enough. You noticed earlier in the toolkit we gave you the little 716 keychain wrench. They're also great for tightening up. They're good for about 11 or 12 inch pounds of torque. If I exceed that, then they'll start to bend because they're light aluminum. And that gives me a nice full tightness there. I can't break this off. This connector is tight. Pressed it in the back. The O-ring inside produces the weather seal there. This is a good outside connector. It will work great and last you many years.